May 2nd, 2023, raw milk in California is recalled for contamination. Three days later, this time in Pennsylvania, another raw milk recall due to Listeria monocytogenes. May 20th, this time it's in Montana. You guessed it, another raw milk recall. The same thing happens in July, August, September, September again, and continues on for the rest of 2023. Even with all these recalls, raw milk is becoming more popular today, and I'm guessing it has to do with some of these suggested health benefits and some of the myths that I will debunk right here and right now. Let's just dive right in with myth number one, which I hear all the time, that healthy, organic, grass-fed cows, these happy cows, they make healthy, safe, raw milk. This milk doesn't need to be processed. That is simply not true. Now, I am all for farmers having good hygiene practices for treating their cows as best as they can, but this does not eliminate the risk of drinking raw milk, and that's because the milk gets contaminated with these microorganisms in many different ways on the farm. It's not just because a cow is stressed or sick. There's several different mechanisms. The milk can get contaminated from all the cow's feces around where we shed a lot of microorganisms in our poop. The germs can also simply just be on the animal's skin outside the animal. They're not necessarily sick in any way. Of course, like anywhere, there's germs in the barns, in the milking equipment just around the farm because there's a lot of people and animals. The cow's udder could be infected. We call this mastitis. And it might not even have anything to do with the a cow but around a farm there's other small animals rodents insects that are around the milking machines and around the raw milk also dairy workers can actually contaminate the milk themselves through dirty hands boots or clothing and what we've seen in studies is even with clinically healthy cows you can get contaminated raw milk that makes humans sick there was a big study done in New Zealand that saw even when cows are healthy, the raw milk can still contain a lot of pathogenic bacteria, bacteria that makes us humans sick, including E. coli, Listeria monocytogenes, Salmonella, and Campylobacter. All things that can make us sick and kill us specifically if you're pregnant, young, old, or already immunocompromised. In fact, it's better to just assume that the raw milk does contain something that can make you sick and different studies cite different numbers or what percent chance this is, but one study says it's up to 30% of raw milk has a pathogen in it. Another cites up to one third of raw milk contains at least one pathogen or bacteria that makes humans sick. What I'm trying to say is that happy, healthy cows is not what makes milk safe to drink. Pasteurization is what makes it safe to drink. Here's another claim that I hear a lot, that raw milk can help alleviate lactose intolerance. Now, all types of milk, they contain the sugar lactose. Now, many people cannot digest lactose either because they are born without this enzyme, or as you age, as you get older, this enzyme starts working less and less well. And that means when you drink dairy products or milk that you have some discomfort, you have bloating, gas, diarrhea, that is uh, the effects of lactose intolerance. There is no reason that raw milk or pasteurized milk or any type of milk should help with lactose intolerance because it does not contain the enzyme needed, lactase, also called beta-galactosidase, which is the enzyme that can cleave and cut up lactose to make it more digestible. Even so, studies have looked at this, they've compared raw milk to pasteurized milk, and neither one can help with your symptoms of lactose intolerance, because again, they do not contain the enzyme you need. Here's another very popular one. This myth is that raw milk contains these uh, beneficial bacteria, these good bacteria that pasteurized milk does not. And I have a couple points I want to make here. One is that pasteurization doesn't kill all the microorganisms. It's a specific time and temperature where we know we kill all the bad microorganisms that could make us sick. It's not like sterilization, which would kill all the microorganisms, would kill all life forms. That's not pasteurization. My next point is about these beneficial bacteria. So we call these probiotics. A probiotic 
means that if you eat enough microorganisms in this high enough amount, it confers a health benefit to the host. Typically, this has to do with gut health. To get any of these benefits from probiotics, you have to eat these microorganisms in extremely high doses, in millions, billions of cells, because most microorganisms will be killed in our stomach with our stomach acid. They will be uh, destroyed in our intestine before they ever make it into our colon or into our gut, where we could have some type of benefit. So any probiotic food has millions of these cells. Now, raw milk, these, these microorganisms, they are not present in large amounts. They're naturally present at very, very low amounts. They are not going to give you any probiotic benefits. They're not there in the numbers required to do that. Myth number four is that raw milk can protect against getting asthma or these different types of allergies. And this claim grew out of several European studies and surveys that linked a reduction in a risk for immune disorders, so that asthma, that allergy, in people who were consuming raw milk. However, this was only seen as a correlation. So people who drank raw milk tended to have less incidence of asthma and different types of allergies. However, raw milk has never been proven to be the cause. In fact, there's been intensive research after these studies trying to prove that it was the raw milk that is the sort of protective factor, and this has never been seen. Now, the general consensus on these European studies is that the protective factor is actually growing up on a farm. You're exposed to a bunch of different animals, different bacteria, different allergens from infancy growing up. And it's this environment that is very different than the environment a modern city kid grows up in that actually protects against asthma and allergies. And there's a certain study that looked at the Amish and the Old Order Mennonites. Both of these cultures lead very traditional farming lifestyles with large families and everyone helps on the farm from childhood. And this type of lifestyle helps protect them. They have very low incidences of different types of allergies and asthma because of how these people grow up and live their life. Here's the final one. Raw milk is more nutritious than pasteurized milk. And I've heard several different variations of this. Raw milk has more blank. If you put in any nutrient, raw milk has more and better protein. Raw milk has more vitamins, minerals. I have heard it all. And this argument really comes back to what does pasteurization do to raw milk? And I have another video on this you might wanna check out. It talks about pasteurization and homogenization. Just quickly, remember that pasteurization is this processing step that heats raw milk to a specific time and temperature to eliminate all human pathogens. Because again, pasteurization does not kill all microorganisms, just the harmful ones. But let's get back to what does pasteurization do to various nutrients in the milk. First, let's tackle minerals. Pasteurization doesn't cause any change in the concentration of minerals. This is like calcium and phosphorus. These, this is like trying to kill like a rock. It's, it's different than a microorganism, which is like a living organism. These minerals are incredibly heat stable. There's no difference before or after pasteurization. Of course, we need to talk about proteins because a lot of people, including me, drink milk for the good amount of protein it has. And the majority of protein in milk comes from casein. About 80% of the protein is this casein protein. Now, this is actually a very unique protein. Caseins don't have a lot of like structure. They're like very flexible and free flowing. And this means that even when they're subjected to high heat, they do not denature. And what I mean by denature is this act of unfolding and losing the protein's original structure. And this is what happens sometimes if there's too much heat, too much pressure, the protein loses its structure. Now casein's because it's this really unique protein actually, it does not denature like other proteins normally do. In fact, you can heat casein in milk at 140 Celsius for over an hour and still nothing happens to it. And that is a really brutal, harsh heat treatment. Pasteurization is way more mild than that heat treatment. The other protein in milk is known as whey, and this is about 20% of the protein in milk. And pasteurization causes a very minor portion of the whey, less than 7%, 
to denature. But this doesn't affect the protein's digestion in any way. It doesn't affect the protein's quality. And in fact, with many proteins, actually, if they are denatured in food processing, this increases the digestibility. Because remember, denature means like the protein unfurls and opens up. And when we then eat those proteins, it's easier for our digestive enzymes, the juices to actually attack and digest and break down those proteins. So yes, there's a very minor level of whey protein that denatures, but it doesn't affect the quality of the food in any way. Vitamins, so let's look at vitamins next. If you look at the label, you will see that milk has a good amount of vitamins A, and if you buy vitamin D milk, vitamin D, and also it has a good amount of vitamin B2, which is called riboflavin. Now vitamins A and E, these are fat soluble vitamins, and these are actually added after pasteurization during processing, meaning the milk is fortified in these vitamins. We add them in to prevent any uh, human diseases or malnutrition. So these do not change before or after processing. Back to vitamin B2 or riboflavin. So this is a water soluble vitamin, but studies have shown that it's incredibly heat stable and that the concentration doesn't change before or after heat treatment with pasteurization. However, pasteurization can cause very minor losses. We're talking uh, less than 10% of vitamins like vitamin C, vitamin B9, B12, B6, and B1. Of these vitamins, only B12 is in a high enough amount that there could be a claim on the milk that it is a good source of B12. All the other vitamins I just listed are in such small amounts that they never have a significant impact on human health in the first place. And I know you might be thinking, well, a loss of even less than 10% of vitamins, well, that sounds like a lot, but here are a bunch of other factors that actually make more of a difference. This includes the type of packaging material, light exposure, the storage time, the storage temperature, these all lead to larger losses of nutrients than pasteurization. And remember to weigh these minor losses against getting a bacterial infection and sick or making your kids or your family sick. If you would like to learn more, next I would check out my video on why milk is pasteurized and homogenized.